Hey guys, EST here, and we're back at my uh, Magic Chef brand, kind of subpar, medium to low efficiency, in my opinion, freezer here. Uh, hand for scale, so that's probably three feet by two feet by like two and a half, something like that. And I kept saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to figure out how you can run this off just a couple batteries and like a solar panel. And I thought, well, I should probably meter it to make absolutely sure, because it says it draws 135 watts. It says that right on the back. You can uh, find that where the cord goes in on any appliance by law. And I had this set on uh, roughly medium, which uh, I thought freezers just go to like 30 degrees and sit there. Apparently you can make it like ice or really, really cold ice. I don't know. I'm no freezer expert, but okay, sure. So this right here is a kilowatt meter. As you can see, it's using uh, zero watts. Uh, according to the spec, it draws 135, but every time I've ever seen this running, it draws uh, 55 watts roughly. So my thinking is it has like a, like a high gear mode, for lack of a better term. And like when it really is, you know, if it's in a garage and the garage is like 110 degrees or something, it just has to crank to keep up. It might switch to like a, a more power draw mode. Either that or their power draw numbers are just an absolute fantasy. Or my meter's broken, but this thing works pretty good. So uh, right now it says 15.23 kilowatt hours, but uh, I ran it for 31 days and it took 14.16 kilowatt hours. It was November, but it was a hot November. So let's just pretend it was July where it's a couple degrees warmer in my basement. So this should uh, leak, or not leak heat, but absorb heat a little quicker. Um, that would probably be 15 kilowatt hours in a 30 day period, which, hey, that's a nice friendly math problem, isn't it? So... Uh, half a kilowatt hour per day. Real simple. So just remember that. So now this is a nice deep cycle uh, marine style battery. It's lead acid, weighs a ton. It's like 12 inches long. Hand for scale again. And uh, I've got a float charger and a quick little voltmeter on it to you know, double check the voltage. Uh, I just did. It's at 12.8 volts. So that's right where it should be. And that just makes sure the battery uh, doesn't you know, lose power over time. It'll just kind of trickle charge it up. And then of course we've got an inverter. You might remember this from my sump pump video. So that Jupiter inverter down there is not a true sine wave inverter, so it's not my favorite thing I would run on a freezer because it's a you know compressor, motor, piston, that kind of thing. Uh, but it's only drawing 55 when it's on, so I don't think I'll damage it by like a little weird power. But I mean, if I ran it on this for a year, I think it would explode. So it's somewhere in between. But if you got the money, buy a good inverter. Um, obviously, it turns you know 12 volt direct current into 120 volts alternating current to run appliances because you know this is dc and your house is ac so that's what an inverter does but i'm not going to rehash you know past videos basically how long could this battery by itself run the freezer and the answer is about three days now the problem is this is a deep cycle lead acid battery so you can't even use 100 percent of the capacity but you know the manufacturers are going to say hey this thing's uh i think roughly 135 amp hours which then obviously divide by 12 to get uh, watt hours. So if this was like 150, like a really good 150 amp hour battery, so better than it is, or if I had, you know, two of them, which I do, um, I could expect you know, upwards of like two kilowatt hours. I know 150 divides out to exactly 1.8 kilowatt hours, which would be a little bit over three days. But you know that freezer, the second the power goes out, I'm wrapping it in blankets, bungee cords to hold them on all kinds of insulation that doesn't block the ports because I don't want it to overheat. But, uh, you know, winter jackets, whatever I got to do, you know, put something on the lid, all that stuff to keep the heat out and keep the temperature difference maintained. I could probably, I, I bet, double the efficiency of it. That doesn't seem like a particularly heavy or well-insulated uh, freezer to me. So if I strapped like five blankets to it, boy, I, I do wonder. But I'm just saying definitely do that. You might be able to stretch it, but... It would almost be easier, although I would take all possible measures to just take this outside, uh, start my car, put jumper cables, you know, to the positive to positive, negative to negative to have it in parallel, and then charge this thing on my car while, you know, revving it to about 2000 RPM for just like, I think a couple minutes would do it. And then, you know, just have the freezer off and then drag this right back down and there you go. Otherwise, the other battery I have, I have an identical one, it is on my solar rig right up the stairs. So I could put them both on there. I could... Uh, flip-flop them you know uh you guys might recall i only have a 10 watt solar panel at the moment and it's winter uh that battery is actually losing power daily because it's all iced over and there's you know it's cloudy and the earth is tilted away from the sun but if i had a 50 watt panel and it was summer would that be good enough and the answer is absolutely it would in theory and I say that because I did the math, and uh, obviously that, that compressor turns on and off. Um, I didn't really know how much. I thought it would run for, like, one minute per hour. Apparently I was off by a factor of, like, 30. So it tends to draw 
on average, if you just say compressor on, compressor off, and then just take the average over the entire month, 19.8 watts continuously. So if you have a source charging the battery that's running the inverter, more than 19.8, there you go. But the other problem is this inverter is not 100% efficient, not even close. Uh, I don't know the numbers, but my guess is probably like 10 to 30% loss to noise, fans, just like the step up voltage, heat, I mean, just anything. So inverters are not notoriously efficient. It could be like 8% for all I know, but based on computer power supplies that are about the same price, uh, it's hard to get those even past like 8% uh, total thermal loss. I'm not saying they do the same thing, but they have similar components. So, you know, nothing in an electrical system is perfect, and I bet this is probably only about 80 amp hours of usable power uh, compared to the specs that they gave on the website. So if we also say, okay, there's a 50 watt solar panel driving this battery, the battery's the buffer, we have an inverter running 24 seven, uh, which is also taking up a little power whether the uh, compressor is drawing or not. So you gotta factor that in, just generally in the air, another you know, 10, 20, 30% loss, who knows. Well, the solar panel isn't actually gonna spit out 50. I mean, unless you're, you've got to point it flawlessly at the sun and you're in the middle of Death Valley, it's not gonna be 50. And even then, it's probably still not gonna be 50. But a 50 watt panel should be able to do at least 20, which would keep up, except, well, not after you factor in everything. So, I mean, you could maybe stretch it with a 50, but I'll tell you what, one single 100 watt panel would absolutely run it continuously, on average. If the sun stayed out 24 hours a day, so then you got like peak power versus sundown versus where do you live, you know, in relation to the equator and those, all these factors. But to be safe, I would say you'd need about 200 watts worth of panels or an alternate power source to run uh, a freezer indefinitely. So if you put one single 250 and like four of these batteries or a bunch of really nice ones or lithium or something, you know, a little more reliable, really big buffer capacity and just threw it in your garage and ran the freezer off that, I think you'd be pretty good. But I would always worry about it because, I mean, batteries fail, and the second anything in the system fails, you lose all your food. Well, not the second, but probably within 24 hours. So you'd have to have, like, Bluetooth monitoring on the charge controller on your phone, and it just turns into a little bit of a project. So would I do an off-grid freezer? Probably not. Would I just, like, put it up in a cabin in the woods up north and then... Uh, set it and forget it and hope it works and hope my, my meat's still frozen by the next time I come a month later. No, I wouldn't trust it. In theory, it should work, but without all kinds of regulation and monitoring and, you know, remote monitoring and like backups and stuff, oh boy, and all that stuff's hyper expensive. So I just wouldn't do it, which is why I never made the video. But if that sounds really pessimistic, let's say, okay, you don't own any of this. You've just got a cheap ghetto inverter that you have sitting around in a package that you got used for 15 bucks and it's an 800 watt inverter and who knows if it's square wave or not. Well, you take the battery out of your car, there you go, hook it up to the inverter with, you know, just little clamps that kind of look like this actually, switch it on and put it on your freezer, there you go. And like I said, wrap blankets around it if you can, keep it cold, and then uh, you know, keep checking it to see if it hits an unhealthy voltage, which I think like 10.5, 10.4 is around the shutoff for these uh, recommended. They'll get down to like eight or nine volts, but it, you won't get it back up. It will be effectively dead at that point, but you'll have bought yourself, you know, maybe like two to five days, depending upon the, the compressor and the quality. Now, if you had a brand new top of the line, super insulated, like almost commercial grade, you know, not full size chest one, just, you know, something pretty conservative, real efficient. You could probably get, I, I would think upwards of at least a week just by stealing a, a battery out of your car. Now it's not a deep cycle like this, but if it's an emergency and you're just like, I have to keep this freezer running, I would prefer to just keep it running for two days and then over the next two days just eat all the food in it. Which, boy, that's more than two days worth of food I've gotten there, but uh, I really packed it. So, okay, freezer is a little bit more difficult than I thought, and I will make a follow-up to this video if I ever get, like, a brand new, just top-of-the-line freezer as far as efficiency, like, energy star rate and all that stuff. And with no lid damage and a perfect seal and zero aging on any of the components. But I, I just don't see it doubling. You know, that's why I'm thinking, oh, well, you might get three days out of one of these, you might get six. Well, then just buy two batteries. So so freezers do sip power, just not to the extent that I thought. Oh, hey, it's the other battery and my solar rig and a bunch of uh, 18650 cells that I can charge on solar. Imagine that. And I mentioned this because uh, like these Samsung 26Cs, which are in terrible condition, I haven't cleaned them yet. There's a clean one. Uh, these are about 2.5 amp hours per cell. So, boy, if you had a way to, you know, hook all these together with punch soldering or with, there's a million different ways to do it. They're all kind of difficult. But if you built a battery out of these, or, you know, you guys have probably heard of a Jackery, like, power generator thing. 
they have 130 26 Cs in them. So basically that exact cell pretty much. Uh, there's 130 of those in, I think they're mid to large size one. And that's got roughly the capacity of like a, a, a really, really high end car battery, maybe up to like two of them. But with, you know, a fraction of the weight and a top quality inverter. So, uh, oh, and then they have uh, the uh, inputs for the solar. So, I'm a big fan of those. My parents actually own one. I currently don't. Hey, sponsor me, Jackery. But I did want to mention these because people will take, like, you know, 80 of these and make a, a improvised cell out of them. And you can just get these out of laptop batteries and, you know, power drill battery packs and stuff. Test them and all that. And they're a bit of a fire hazard if you don't buy them brand new. And brand new, these things are, you know, three, four, five a cell. But... Um, they're, they're real light and they're two and a half amp hours a piece on average, actual real usable. So, I mean, some of these are rated for higher, but, uh, even these, uh, Sanya ones, these things will do about 2.2 amp hours. So you can safely say maybe two each. So if you had a whole stack of them, maybe 12 of them, that's 24 amp hours. That's one quarter of one of those. And it weighs, I don't even know, 10 times less, 20 times less. It weighs pretty much nothing. I think this whole, this whole thing right here is about a pound, not even. So that is, you know, obviously, of course, an option. So that's been your, uh, you know, how long can you run a freezer on batteries video. If you liked it and the information was useful, leave a thumbs up and maybe subscribe for more great information. We do a lot of uh, electrical stuff and real world tests. And uh, we finally got some snow on the ground. It's officially winter. So we're going to do all the fun winter stuff in the next couple months. So watch for that. And I'll see you guys next time.